let's look at the brain. Not literally, obviously, because that's a bit messy. I have to unscrew the top and scoop it out with a faucet. Or an ice cream scoop. 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 But let's take a, a virtual look at the brain and what you can do for it. The older we get, the more toxins we take in, the more the brain starts to emulsify. We don't need to go into glial cells and neurons and how neurons are made up of axons and dendrites and all that technical stuff because we don't need to know it. We can talk a little bit about the blood brain, blood brain, the blood brain barrier. But what I really want to do is talk more about what you can do to make sure your brain is as healthy as it can be. So you don't need to know about sparks and all the other bits that go on inside it. You just need to know what to do. Because you've got a lot of little spark plugs inside that head of yours. Lots of little spark plugs. Millions. Millions and billions and billions and billions and billions, billions and, and millions of them. The brain is nearly 60% fat. The rest is made up of water and electricity and thinking and not thinking. So in order to have a healthy brain, you must take in healthy fats because we are made up of what we eat. So you want to leave out things like sunflower oil. Although sunflowers are good for the heart, the oil goes rancid very easily. Olive oil is one of the best you can use. Uh, it's not so good for cooking because over, I think it's 140 degrees, it starts to go rancid. So if you're cooking with olive oil, make sure you use genuine extra virgin olive oil because it has a high capacity to combat oxidative stress not only in itself in cooking but in you things like unflavored coconut oil and avocado oil very good walnut oil is very good there are a few oils that are really good as long as you can keep them from oxidizing so keep the lid tightly on don't heat them too high Coconut oil can be heated up to, I think, 400 degrees. It'll take anything you can throw at it. And on the point of cooking, you want to try not to cook with aluminium foil. It's very popular to wrap up your potatoes and stick them in the old barbecue and cook things that way. It's very popular to wrap all your food in aluminium foil. But when aluminium foil reaches a certain temperature, a little bit higher than it would do for oil to go rancid. Very small parts called, I don't know, atoms I guess, will then leach off of the aluminium into your food. It's like when you go out for a, a takeaway. You can have an Indian takeaway or a Chinese takeaway. And in one you'll get your food in a plastic container, in another one you'll get it in an aluminium container. So what do you choose? Do you want plastic, which is going to cause cancer, or do you want aluminium, which is going to cause Alzheimer's? It has been linked with Alzheimer's, so, you know, make sure you don't get any in your food, because it won't help. But then that goes for all heavy metals. Okay, aluminium is quite light, but it is classed as a heavy metal. So things like lead, definitely lead, you don't want that in your food. The, Rus the Romans, not the Russians, the Romans taught us that one and the stuff you get in your fillings the silver amalgam they call it but it's got mercury in it so you really don't want to be eating mercury that also you can get that in fish things like tuna have a lot of mercury in them just because they are large fish and they tend to eat a lot of stuff in the sea which is full of mercury at the moment so tuna although it's a good fatty fish and fatty fish are good oily fish are good for the brain really you want to stay below mackerel you don't really want to go above mackerel in size things like pilchards very good full of oil and good for the brain a lot of research from America to Australia has shown that rapeseed oil is one of the most unhealthy fats that you can eat, one of the most unhealthy oils you can eat. It uh, has a high polar index which is something to do with bad stuff in oil and can cause Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and all sorts of nasty things like that. 
you really want to cut out any foods that have got rapeseed oil in them. Most processed foods use rapeseed oil because it's very cheap. Like I say, you don't want to be using plastic. If you've got one of these plastic boards and you start cutting on that, you'll find that very, very small parts of that plastic will come off. You won't be able to see it, it's called microplastic. But it'll come off and it'll get in your food and start to get into your blood system. On top of that, I believe this one is antibacterial. So not only will the plastic get into you, but the antibacterial properties will start to kill off your microbiome, your defense against the world. So that's another reason not to use these. I prefer a good chunk of oak. Oak has its own healing properties. It heals itself. It actually protects itself from water. Oak releases an oil and that oil stops the water penetrating the wood. Two glasses of red wine a day is supposed to be very good for the heart and for the microbiome. And uh, as Mrs L points out to me, our gla these glasses on holiday are much smaller than the ones we've got at home, so this is why I'm on my third. One of the things I talk about in this incredibly cheap book is fluoride. So with that in mind, let's have a look at a recipe. The ingredients are coconut oil, fresh mint, and a teaspoonful of baking soda, sea salt, and diatomous earth. Cut it right up into little tiny pieces. This rock and roll cutter from IKEA does a really good job. Put some coconut oil in a little jar, stick it in the microwave, let it do its thing. You want to make sure it's only just melted. Don't let it get too hot. Add into that one teaspoon of Himalayan sea salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of diatomous earth, if you can get it. By now your mint is smelling really good, and it's chopped up into very, very fine bits. Scoop that up and stick it in the mix. Stir it until it's all mixed in, which could take a minute or two because you want the salt to actually mix up. And there we go. Let's have a look at it once it's been cooled. And there's the finished product. I was going to do one exercise this month, but because it's the last month I'm doing this, possibly, then we shall do two. The first one is called CP, which is controlled pause breathing. What you do is you, you rest for 10 minutes, then take in a breath, not too high, not too deep, just a normal breath, but extend it a bit, and breathe out, and breathe in, and breathe out. And then on the out breath, hold your breath until you feel like breathing back in again. Time it from when you hold your breath out to when you breathe back in. It'll probably last 15 seconds. But if you can get up to a minute doing that, if you practice that every day, get up to a minute, it means you are virtually immune to any type of illness. Believe it or not. The second one is called box breathing, which the Navy SEALs use. Very simple. All you do is breathe in, for four counts, hold for four counts, and then breathe out through your mouth for four counts. So in through your nose, four, one, two, three, four, hold for four, out through your mouth for four, hold for four, and repeat that. They reckon it helps to calm them under stressful circumstances, and I'm sure they go through a few of those. I got them from this incredible book by Ben Greenfield, a 13 times Iron Man competent competitor it goes into everything and you wouldn't believe how big it is or how heavy but not heavy in content very easy to understand very easy to implement so yes folks this is probably going to be the last one I've got plenty of other things I need to get on with uh, it's been great fun there's 10 more to look at descriptions below in the description box go and have a look at those if you haven't seen them if you have look at them again Good luck, folks. Stay healthy.